Tiffany here is now on high level, and this is fourth ride um, because he had his foot soaked for two or three weeks. Abscess is gone, and he's on the fast track now. Do you like riding that horse? I do. I'm really happy that he's back in action. And the first time you rode him was before when he wasn't quite healed, right? And how did he feel then? He felt like I was sitting on a brick. Yeah. <laughs> to be frank, he was stiff as a board. He was a freight train in my hand. And honestly, I was excited I had solidified ride because I was like, wow, I, don't, I didn't expect this horse to feel like this. And what, what changed? Obviously, he doesn't feel like a brick today. No, he is actually pretty soft and pretty supple. Honestly, I think that a lot of his submission issues being handled carried over to being ridden. And the more he got handled with the vet and the farrier and all the soaking and the grooming, he actually got more submissive and that carried over to the riding. I know that sounds a little unbelievable, but he feels like a completely different horse. Because we're talking about a horse who spent most of two years turned out since he raced and during that time he didn't do any work he didn't I mean I'm sure he got handled but he didn't uh, he was a little disrespectful when I went to see him the first time and when he came here as well right yeah he was quite pushy mm -hmm. he had to chain everywhere you know he had to have a twitch to soak at first he just wow. was not yeah. a yeah. not a good boy didn't want yeah. to be vacuum clipped nothing you seem to be pushing him pretty quickly and pretty far in just a few rides yeah and I you know, I don't feel like I'm pushing him too fast. He's letting me know he's comfortable with everything, and I feel like he's gained my trust and respect by just simply asking him to go forward. And we're working on the straightness, as you saw. You know, that's still a kind of a work in progress. But giving him a job has helped him relax and helped him feel more comfortable, I think, in his body and his brain and everything. So you had a little episode at the other end of the ring, starting in the corner and across. Tell us what was going on there. Were you nervous? No. <laughs> I have complete faith in both of you. Um, well, I was just asking him to turn, and he was like, no, thank you. And I was like, come on, let's go straight and let's turn. And he said no, and I just said, you know what? This is what we're doing. I'm not going to try and go through that. We're going to just swap your lead back and keep on going. And he, like, relaxed after I pushed him through the turn, and he took a deep breath, and he was like, oh, that's what you wanted. Yeah, he almost bolted, though, for a moment. Oh. He, you pushed, and he went, right? Yes, he definitely took off a little bit, and mm -hmm. I just planted my hands in his neck and stayed in my little and you half stayed. seat and just kind of pushed him through it, and then he helped him relax and come back, and then I got a half halt, and I got him to turn. Exactly, <laughs> right. You did not sit back and pull when no. he surged forward. <laughs> yes, no, I think that's so important that when your horse has a moment, don't pick your hands up. Keep your hands down, use your horse's neck, grab the yoke, or, you know, just keep your hands down. But the more you pick your hands up, the more you're going to lose your balance and the less control you're going to have over your horse's shoulders. So you really seem to like this horse high level. I do. What do you think he's going to be doing a month from now if you were to be lucky enough to keep him? If you had him in a month, if you had him in six months? Well, that's a little bit of a tricky question because I am uber conservative with what I do with my horses. I like to take my time with all of them. I never rush any of them, ask any of my students, any of my clients. Right. But high level has already told me that he's gonna be able to go on and do a little bit more, just kind of where his body and his brain is at. Honestly, I feel like I could be probably jumping him around a little course in a month, taking him to a horse show in a month and a half even. And I think I could be, you know, just, moving him along because I think he's ready to. He's telling me he's ready to go and do something. And he is full of confidence. He's a little bit of a cocky horse. Even though he twists his head and stuff like that, I don't necessarily know that that's nervousness. I think that's just a little bit of, a little bit of just, I don't know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that the last thing you wanted to do with that horse was to let him get bored. I'm surprised he wasn't a great race horse because to me, he, he, he just seems competitive. Yeah. Well. Hopefully he'll become great at something else. <laughs> I, I think he's going to be a great sport horse. I'm really excited to get to work with him. And hopefully Jim will want to keep him longer with Yeah, me. talk to Jim Falk. I think Jim Falk should own a show horse or two. <laughs> so we're joking about how, how high level is a superstar potentially and that you could take him very far. So what about high level with an average amateur who's a pretty good rider but hasn't really trained a whole lot of horses? How do you think they would do, and what, what issues do you think they would need to confront with that horse? 
Well, I think that he still needs everything to be a little bit more confirmed. I think kind of where his brain is at, he might be able to carry a little bit of the confidence for both of them, mm -hmm. um, which in some ways might be a good thing. In some ways, he might be a little bit silly and use his athleticism in a way that might not be the most, you know, comfortable for an amateur, uh -huh. but I do think that he's going to be able to have an amateur. I think Solidify will too. I think he just mm -hmm. needs more training, more time, right. which they all yeah. do. Um, I do think that I could see high level, uh, you know, a strong adult amateur, you know, someone that, you know, has been going preliminary, intermediate, maybe like take him on and bring them on themselves. I think that um, a young, he'd be a great young rider's horse. I think that... Uh, I think he'd be a nice trail horse for somebody, don't I mean... Uh, yeah, I, think I mean... He he's, could be a nice fox hunter for somebody. Uh, absolutely. I I, could, I, you know, I just like it, was looking at how big right. and far he could go. Yeah, of course, with a name like but, High Level. Right. But, <laughs> no, I mean, I really think that seeing the way that horse was in the stall and how your barn help is saying he's the puppy dog of the barn now and he's just right. a sweetie pie, right. I could see almost anybody with that horse. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. He's not going to go the same way it goes for you, but he's going to be a sweet horse, right. I would think. Do you get many horses in training that are off the track, fresh off the track? Not a ton. I have one student that got a horse last February. She's kept him in full training, and mm. we're working on getting her up on him, you know, more consistently. I had one other horse that now I have on consignment that was off the track, but, mm. you know, not usually. I, I don't either. I'm getting more now that we've been doing this for the last couple of years with the retired race horses, where people will actually pay the training fee. And some of them are people who have a race horse who they want to make sure it ends up in a good place, so they get the training and then sell it, and they hopefully get their training money back. And then some of them are people who are acquiring horses. But what do you think about the value added from the training that you're doing on this horse? If you chat him for a month, high level, what do you think uh, the value added would be? I actually think this horse might have a little bit more value than the other horse. You know, he's going to be able to do a little bit more sooner than Solidify because he had a break mm -hmm. off the track. Um, his body feels good to me. Everything feels nice and even. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be something that a lot of people can actually go off and do something with. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to jump him. I can't wait to see you jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it might actually be sooner than later. I mean, everything uh -huh. he's telling me, I don't see why I can't jump a couple fences before the expo. Yeah. So. so you think you can go into the trainer challenge on a horse that's only been ridden for two weeks against the horses that have been ridden for five weeks? I, I think I might be able to. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right. We'll see you in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>